On April 22, 1970, the first Earth Day was organized in cities across America. Millions of people protested the state of the environment, and back then there was plenty to be upset about. There were big problems with trash, chemical waste, and polluted waterways. The previous year, a river had caught on fire. But one of the worst offenders was the air. Major cities across the country were blanketed in a thick, brown layer of smog. It was estimated that breathing it was the equivalent of smoking two packs of cigarettes per day. It's so remarkable to look back at these photos because today, our air is so much cleaner. It's one of the most stunning environmental success stories of all time, and yet most people hardly ever think about it. Now, we don't have the cleanest air in the world, as President Trump recently tweeted. But out of the nearly 200 countries in the world, the U.S. comes in 10th for clean air, which is cleaner than almost every country in Europe. Satellite images from NASA show the progress we're making in reducing our air pollution. But it's part of a trend that's been going on for decades. Since 1970, the six most common air pollutants have been reduced dramatically by 74%. What's remarkable is that over the same time frame, we grew the economy, drove more, increased our population, and used more energy. 80% of the energy we use today comes from natural gas, oil, and coal, and it's been that way for decades. Which raises the question, how is our air so clean? Part of the answer is, as countries get wealthier, the greener they eventually become, because they are better able to create a clean environment they can afford to clean up their water and air. They can develop better technology. Modern vehicles are 99% cleaner than they were in the 70s. They create more parks and plant more trees. In fact, the U.S. has more trees in it today than it did 100 years ago. By contrast, when looking at the priorities of relatively poor developing countries, it's no surprise that environmental issues tend to rank near the bottom. That's because they often have more pressing needs to worry about like jobs, food, and access to reliable energy. This makes sense when you realize that roughly one billion people in the world still don't have access to any electricity at all. No light bulb, no refrigerator, no modern hospital. Access to abundant energy is absolutely needed to lift countries out of poverty and raise their standard of living. Take a look at India and China. Since 1970, they dramatically increased their use of natural gas, oil, and coal, and both their life expectancy and prosperity skyrocketed. Now they're going through some of the same growing pains with smog that America did in the 70s. And evidence suggests that it's drifting over to the US, making our air quality worse. But like America's story, it doesn't necessarily mean that they'll stay this way forever. As China, India, and other developing countries continue to progress over the course of the 21st century, get access to more energy, become wealthier, and are better able to take care of their environment, we could begin to envision a world that's wealthier and greener for many more people. America can lead by example, helping other countries emulate our environmental success. And there's still room for improvement in our air today. We absolutely should continue seeking out cleaner and more advanced technologies and never stop looking for smarter and more efficient ways to use energy. But when the next Earth Day rolls around, we should all take a moment to remember where we used to be, celebrate how clean our air is today, and look forward to an even better future. It might help us all breathe a little easier.